Hi, I'm Prophet Tom James. God has put a mandate on my heart, and that mandate is to preach the prophetic word. Well, greetings once again. It's Prophet Tom, and we're here to begin the month of October. Today being the 1st of October, and what a powerful way to begin it. Your season of Pentecost brings transformation. I'm not talking about the day of Pentecost, because that is a historical event, and we'll read about it in a moment. But the emphasis today is your season. This is your season. Don't wait till tomorrow. You know, Joel says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. And most people believe that to be the day of Pentecost. But here we are some 2,000 plus years later, and it still has not been poured out. But it can be poured out on and through you today usher in another reformation to usher in another transformation but first the work must begin in you your season you say i'm not worthy your season of pentecost if we look at the 120 in the upper room, oh, what a phenomenal 10 days we have experienced. And we looked at it last week. What a phenomenal experience to be in the presence of the Holy Ghost for 10 days. To bathe, to be baptized to be emerged in the anointing, the glory, and the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Isaiah, when he saw the heavens open, he says the whole earth uh, is full of his glory. And then he began to see what was in heaven, and he fell down as though he were dead. The apostle John, a seasoned apostle, the age of 90 years of age, uh, is in on the Lord's day, is seeking the Lord, uh, and he's in the Spirit of God, uh, and the heavens open, uh, and he begins to have this conversation uh, with Christ Jesus himself, uh, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Then he looks up and sees and experiences the glory of God Almighty and falls down as though he were dead. Solomon built this beautiful house up to the Lord. And on completion of this house, uh, he sacrificed thousands of animals. Uh, and then came the day of the, the time of dedication. And the glory of God descended so that the priest could not enter the town. Moses, in bringing Israel out of Egypt, uh, comes to the mountain of God, and the mountain bellows uh, with the presence of God Almighty. It echoes, uh, it yells, it screams, there's lightning, there's flashing, there's smoke. Uh, and the people say to Moses, you speak with God and tell us what he says. And Moses goes into the mount in the presence of God. And Moses goes back up into the mountain and he spends time in the mountain. And this time when he comes down out of the mountain, uh, he is shining with the glory of God to the point the people can't stand, the people can't ha handle this anointing that is radiating out of his presence. Yet, when we look at these men, Moses, a killer, 
one that's fleeing from Pharaoh in Egypt. Solomon, thousand wives. When he wrote the book of his, uh, uh, of uh, Z uh, he says, woe is me. Woe is me. Ecclesiastes, when he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, he says, woe is me. David, a shepherd's boy, out with his sheep, writing the most powerful psalms that have ever walked the face of the earth, uh, psalms that will transform lives and give purpose and meaning. Just a shepherd's boy. Just a shepherd's boy. Then he said this. Peter. Oh, wretched Peter. Let Jesus down time and time again. As we looked at last week. Now. He's Pentecost had come. And we'll see today or Thursday. What that Pentecost meant. Chapter 2 reveals the powerful and transformative nature of the Holy Spirit. You see, it doesn't matter what your upbringing was. You may have been a tent maker. You may have been a scholar. You may have been a fisherman. You may have been a tax collector. You may be uneducated. You may find it even difficult to write the passages together. But when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, as revealed in Acts chapter 2, he powerfully, we see the power, the transformative work we see the power, the extraordinary power that took uh, an uneducated fisherman and established him as the foundation president of the church of Jesus Christ. Those 120 in that upper room, the day had come, there was lightning, there was thunder, the bird, the building burnt, but was not consumed. Thousands of people come running from all over Jerusalem. There could have been 20, 50,000 people that came running to this upper room. Disciples come out after two days. They're drunk. They're not the same. They were fearful. When they walked through that doors of the upper room 10 days earlier, they were uncertain when they walked through those doors in the upper room. At the moment, they walked through those doors. They walked into the presence of the Holy Ghost. The moment they walked through those doors in the upper room, they walked through as ordinary people, but were confronted by an extraordinary power, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power that would enable those 120 people to fulfill the mission and directive of Jesus Christ. The events of Pentecost demonstrated the fulfillment of God's promise and the beginning. See, look at yourself right now. You're born again, but you feel inadequate you're born again but you've already let god down you're born again and you're walking towards that upper room 
and for the next 10 days. You see, this is the theme today. Not Pentecost, which we'll read in a moment. No, not Pentecost. The theme today, your season of Pentecost. You see, you and me, we need to experience our own personal Pentecost. Moses could not go back to Jerusalem, to Egypt until he had that burning bush experience. These 120, when they came up out of the room of Acts chapter 2, and let's read verses 1 to 4, and it says this, And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they, who are they? The 120 believers. They were all what? With one accord. If we go back to when Christ ascended to heaven, there were 500 who saw the ascension of Christ. The 380 said, this is it, and went their own way. 120 made that bold step of faith and walked back into Jerusalem. They could have been killed on the way. Were they fearful? Yes. Were they afraid? Yes. Was there uncertainty that surrounded them? Yes, just like in your life. But they went. And in that 10 days, all of the rags fell off. All of their fears fell off. All of their doubtings fell off. All of their uncertainties fell off. And they were changed forever. Let me read on. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. The 120 did not leave that room. They stayed for 10 days. They didn't know whether it was going to be one day or 300 days, but they stayed. It said they were all. That means every one of the 120 were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. tells us the multitudes gathered. It tells us that there could have been 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand people there. Everyone had come back to Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. If you look up into the stands, uh, they were full. I'm not saying that was the scene on the day of Pentecost, but that was the crowd on the day of Pentecost. The, the, the multitude came running because they heard noise. They saw lightning. They saw this building on fire, but it was not consumed. didn't know what it was. They were fearful. They were afraid. They wanted to know what it was. Let's look at the 120 for a moment. Not one of them was concerned that fire burnt on the top of their heads. Not one of them was concerned that the building was on fire but was not consumed. Not one of them was concerned that 20, 30,000 people had come running around this upper room that they were in. They were lost in the extraordinary power of the Holy Ghost. They were changed. And if we were to do 
a project of looking at their life after Pentecost, we see no negativity written about any of that. Peter stood and preached. 3,000 souls get saved. Peter and John go to the temple and a crippled man is raised from the dead. Uh, they preach again and 5,000 souls are saved. Uh, then they add it to the church directly. This was their season of Pentecost, their season of seeing their lives changed forever. But as I close, we need to look to have our season of penny. Oh, forget about worrying about the next revival. If you worry about the next revival, it'll never come. If you're saying we need a prophet, then it will never happen. Because it's not about they. It's about you. Your season of Pentecost brings transformation. Your season of Pentecost will change you so that the sins that bound you before will never bind you again. Your season of Pentecost will transform you into a weak, fearful, afraid believer into the most bold Elijah that walk the face of this earth. So my prophetic word to you today as I close. Your season of Pentecost is now, is now, and it will transform you. This is Prophet Tom. It's been a joy to share with you today. Go and have a powerful week. Go and begin to wait upon God in your closet, in your war room, until you have your Pentecost. God bless you.